Hello everyone, I'm here to show you how to attach a line trace to another line trace. To create that uh, bullet exit hole effect with a decal. I just want to do this tutorial because I felt like it was it's needed because you need to learning how to attach another raycast to another raycast is important. Because right now, I have a multi-line trace by channel passing through this box here that can hit this back wall here. This is an actor that once it collides with the multi-line trace by channel, it fires off a line trace from the end of this particular line trip multi-line trace it fires a single line trace by channel out of a multi-line trace channel so it'll create an exit hole like that so if i shoot through it it gives the illusion like the one multi-line trace by channel is firing through the uh the one multi-line trace by channel is firing through the box and hitting hitting but in reality, it is just hitting this box, creating a blocking hit, and then and then creating an exit hole outside the back of this box. Well, I will uh, see you in one moment, and I'll show you the code. I'm here at the on fire on fire. Uh, function for the the tutorial character see a raycast decal tutorial character and now uh, what you want to do you want to delete all the code inside of this on fire on fire uh, function you want to put this in here I'll explain it quickly or I'll try to explain it quickly here uh, using uh, rifle query params for the FP gun, you don't want the, the multi-line trace to hit the gun itself. And here's the enemy hit. I'm using a T-array of F hit results. Enemy hit. Gun start trace. Which is the get socket location function. That uses the muzzle that you attach using the using the animation section of Unreal Engine, you attach, uh, or the skeleton section of the uh, of Unreal Engine, that allows you to attach a socket that is called Muzzle, and use that socket to fire off the Raycast. I'm getting the current rotation, which allows me to get the current rotation of the socket itself, which, you know, applies to the skeleton socket. So if you have a certain rotation, It'll affect it. It'll affect the line traces rotation. The gun end trace is equal to start end trace plus current rotation vector multiplied by 7,000. And that's the uh, length of the line trace itself or where it's going to end. I'm using a draw debug line. Line. So then I could, you know, of course, debug and show you more accurately. In end trace, which is the start trace, plus the current rotation, which vector. I'm turning this into a vector multiplied by 7,000. See, now I'm using a multi-line trace by channel, so that then the, the first line trace can pass through. I created a game trace channel. So I then it doesn't collide with the visibility channel. If I decide to use block, if I were to use visibility and create a blocking hit, it would it would account for both. So it's usually useful to have at least one other uh, game trace channel or one other line trace channel. So I think you could you could account for it. 
so that then you could uh, have more flexibility so that then these don't turn to two blocking hits at the same time. And, you, and usually you don't want that. You want to create one, one new trace channel for each channel you create that is new. This is the, the blocking hit, the start trace, the end trace. I'm, I'm detecting to see if, if the hits is greater than zero. So that then it's not, so that basically means that that's how you would detect if you actually get a hit. So for example, if you uh, hit more than one, or you want to check to see if it's greater than greater or equal than two, you would just put a two here, and uh, then this an action would happen. Like if you want to fire in queue, like if for example, if you if you if you miss and then you want to fire a uh, an audio cue to go with that, you would just uh, check to see if it is greater than or less than or less than zero. You would check to see if it's less than or equal to zero because you hit nothing and you want audio cue to play specifically. Depending, dependent on whether or not you hit anything. If you hit something, you can play this part, a particular audio cue. I'm, I'm for looping through the, all the results. This will check all the results. Instead of like, I don't know, doing a traditional for loop by uh, calculating maybe five five F hit results. Let's say you're looping through the entire tire until the results are all filled up with enemy hits. You're for looping through it, checking to see or or, a lot, or uh, checking to see if you actually hit through all the results and you're checking to see if there's any results at all by using this for loop. Allows you to pass through until there is a blocking hit. It's checking to see if there's any enemy hits within results. So um, I'm checking to see if an actor has gotten hit, cast into A actor, result with the results to get actor. And if it does happen, you plant a decal onto the actor itself. This is where I spawn the decal itself. I don't know if I explained this correctly. Like you're looping through to see if there are any enemy hits within the results memory address. So if you do if you if you do hit, you're casting to a actor and your results get actor, and you and then you're 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 uh, gonna plant a decal on that actor. And, and once that happens. I'm creating another line trace using this code here. Here in your uh, making bullet hole start trace line start trace equal to gun start trace. So you're making it equal to this socket location. You're checking to see if the gun in trace for rotation for the gun in trace for rotation. That is plus the bolt hole rotate bolt hole current rotation. Using another draw debug line draw debug line to check for the second line trace. And then I am now uh, 
I'm now activating a line trace itself, the second line trace. And you're checking to see if it hits another actor with the same visibility channel. And now this is the decal bullet size, bullet hole size. You're checking the trace in rotation. So it's basically almost it's, it's the equivalent of the first rotation, gun and trace rotation. Decal location, which is the blood line and trace location. Or the bullet hole. Let me, let me change that. You're checking to see if F hit results contains the bullet hole and trace F hit. The reason why I'm using a single line trace by channel because it seems kind of unnecessary to use a multi line trace by channel for this because you're only getting the exit hole. You're not trying to get multiple exit holes in this in this case. If you wanted to get multiple exit holes, you probably would you would if or if you want the line trace once the exit what once the exit um, hole happens, it will then pass another line trace through that through that wall through the exit hole wall. Checking to see if the actor I'm spawning a decal. And uh, that's about it. You're looping through to see the uh, see if enemy hit is in results. The enemy hit result, enemy or the T array F hit results is inside of results. You're loop, looping through to check for it. Excuse me. You're spying a decal if you hit an actor. To make this more precise, I could probably use the box actor itself by doing this. To checking specifically for that box actor. Instead of just using any other so I build it For this multi-line trace by channel to work, you need this for loop. It's a necessity. So I'll, I'll go back to see if it worked. I'll compile again inside the engine just in case. So now, as you can see, it doesn't just hit any other actor. Not to show the specific difference between the two. 
of any actor and just casting specifically. These brackets here are usually where, and, and this pointer here, this class pointer here, you want you want you want to pay attention to this. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna change from a box example actor to a actor. Any actor. That's so, all so I'm gonna do, go back. And as you can see, look. Instead of picking up just specifically that particular box, it's, it's picking up every other one. Every other actor. Huh. One moment. See now it's uh it's picking up the see it blocked the visibility channel. You see that? And I'm gonna set it to ignore. And now look. Now, now do you understand? This one also. Set that to ignore. See now it's not blocking the visibility actor. Now. Now I can set it to block here because why not? Look. And now it'll block. Uh, part of the reason why I wanted to show this is to give more of an in-depth explanation to how this point this pointer works, so I can just change the box A box example actor. So if you want to check for a specific actor that you want this cast to affect. Oops. You do this. You check specifically if this cast with this results. It, you're checking to see if results actually hit. You're checking to see if results basically has enemy hit. And if this actually works. I'm go back here, compile. And now, the first line trace will not, the multi line trace will not hit this box at all whatsoever. And the reason why this wall doesn't hit, this wall does not connect with this multi line trace, is simply because I set the block. Oh no, it's not that. It's because the cast is preventing me from being able to hit it. Sorry. And the reason why this is not passing through... The 
Okay, now I set the block. So now this should work. Well, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial on how to attach a raycast to um, another raycast. I hope you have a good day. Have a wonderful day. This, uh, have a wonderful day, and uh, I'll